the South Carolina District 8 1. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Members of the Commission, good morning. And I'll try not to take a lot of your valuable time. Uh, I do want to give you an update from last year when we were talking about uh, the state of public health, and we are there. We want to know a little bit, you know, a little, to know a little bit about what's going on this morning. Again, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we in public health, uh, basically, the Department of Public Health statewide, the population has increased about 10 million from 9.5 million in 2008 2012. And this basically this year is from 2008 to 12. South Health District, that's us, way down here. Uh, down here, of course, and Lowndes is right here. Lowndes is the lead county. Our district has gone from 247,000 to 256,000 in the last four years. Uh, Georgia's 36th rank in the nation of health. I'll get to that in just a minute. <clears throat> Change corners. Uh, this is the mission of the Department of Public Health, preventing the disease, promoting health and well being, prepared for responding to disasters from a health perspective. What do we do? Uh, it's a busy slide. I'm going to make it very, very brief. brief. Uh, we basically have about 1,300 children. We treat in children's health, children's medical services. It has to do with asthma, neurological disorders. Uh, we see orthopedic scoliosis patients. We have an asthma clinic. We have pediatric cardiology, pediatric orthopedics. We, again, we see 1,300 children in this clinic. Again, the uh, babies can't wait. We have approximately 400 uh, patients there. This is developmental delay for autism, Down syndrome, speech delay, vision problems, and uh, these are huge programs, and Children First refers to these programs, and we have about 300 children there. We are, of course, involved in childhood immunizations. Uh, we audit schools to make sure the children that are in schools, that they're at the immunizations are what are legally required for them to be in school. We're involved in nutrition, physical activity, of course, with school systems and partnering throughout the county. Oral health, uh, we do a lot of oral health in all the school systems in our district. WIC, we have 10,000 clients in the WIC program, women, infant, and children, nutritional program up to five years of age, and school health, I oversee all the school nurses in all the district. They basically work under my license as a designated, uh, designated to them. We actually only employ two of them. The remainder of those are employed by the Board of Education but we are uh, integrally involved in school health in all the schools, not only in Lyons County, but throughout the 10 uh, counties in our district. Women's health, we've had between Je uh, July and December of this year, we've had 5,000 visits to family planning to help women plan their pregnancies before they get pregnant. We offer perinatal case management, uh, pregnancy-related services to make sure that they have healthy babies and healthy infants, healthy mothers, uh, all that, uh, <clears throat> because if they don't, they, they're a tremendous burden as far as the health system goes. We have a breast and cervical cancer program for women who cannot not afford it any other way. Chronic disease, communicable, communicable disease prevention. We treated in the last six months a uh, thousand patients for uh, STDs. We have approximately <coughs> 500 patients in an HIV program. Adult immunizations, basically, we do 30 immunizations, travel immunizations like yellow fever that no one else does. And tuberculosis, and right now in our 10th district area, we have 64 patients that are being treated and are followed for tuberculosis. Uh, 16 are in direct observation. What does that mean? We go out to home, we watch them take the medicine. The interesting story there, I think the uh, county lawyer can speak, speak with this. Uh, we had one client that would not let a nurse at any house to give him the medicine. But as soon as they left, he would go out. He had active tuberculosis. He was coughing. Uh, he was exposing uh, the public to this. Uh, long story short, two, he got transferred down here to the infectious disease doctor, South Georgia Medical Center. Uh, approximately two lawyers, two hearings, two Superior Court judges involved by the sheriff of Lyons County and involved in the CEO of South Georgia Medical Center. This client was admitted to the TB prison hospital in South Carolina. He was treated, he is in remission, he's back home, he's put on 40 pounds, and he's sorry he gave us such a hard time. <laughs> you don't hear about this. Uh, these are the kind of things we get involved in almost daily in the health department that no one would know, and I didn't know before I went there. Environmental health, of course, restaurant inspections you see in the paper. Uh, we have issues uh, with when we do not try to close any restaurant. We do cite some, we just cited one in the county. When they don't follow the education, when they flunk an exam, they're set by the state as far as standards go. 
Uh, we try to keep them open, educate them, and we are the ones that grade them that you see in the paper and other places. We're also responsible for septic tank and well placement. Uh, public swimming pools, we do inspect and include including wild adventure. This is not private, this is public. To try to prevent uh, waterborne illnesses. <laughs> Tourist accommodation, we had a motel on I-75. We had to shut eight beds in because of a bed bug problem. We don't go out and advertise this. Uh, they did fumigate, they did take care of it. The problem was rectified. Uh, <clears throat> and those are some of the things that we do that other people, including me, didn't know before I went to work there. Body art problems, yes. We're now inspecting tattoo problems. Why are we doing that? Because they spread hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and serious skin infections if they're not kept clean. And this is part of what we do and part of our responsibility. Uh, Help, we of course, we do help promote education, tobacco cessation, obesity prevention in conjunction with multiple partners. We're responsible for vital records and four of them, Lyons County being the largest. Uh, and emergency preparedness is a huge part of what we do. We work in conjunction, of course, with Ashley Ty and other partners throughout the district. And it's, it's about a million dollar part of our program. Uh, it, it's huge, you just don't hear about it, fortunately, because we haven't had any real serious disasters. And, and that's great, I'm not, I hope we don't. Uh, South House District, 2008 district budget, $13,800,000. District budget 2013, looks like it's gone up almost a million dollars. In that period of time, however, we've had uh, the stroke hypertension and uh, heart attack prevention program that was closed by the state. We've had Ryan White, uh, a uh, age clinic that was closed uh, in one of our surrounding counties. We've had two teen clinics that, that for teen issues uh, that have been closed at Adolescent Health. We have staff of four. We're down to Adolescent Health staff of one, 2008-2013. Why is this? Well, if you look at the, if you look at the top line, salaries almost $7 million, 2008-2013, which would show an increase of $112,000 or 1.6%. You will see most of this, however, our hourly labor has gone up significantly, about 108%, which means we have less full-time employees and more part-time employees to, to give services. The next slide really is, the next figure is, is the important one that I want to just, fringe benefit, $2.8 million, 2008, $3.6 million, 2013, gone up 31%. But that's a million dollar increase, which is goes goes, and I'll break that down for you in just a minute. We can't use for any of us anything else. This is, we can't use it to give raises, to spend on clients. During that same period of time, we we of course have had uh, a decrease in direct benefit to clients of four million dollars, and other operating funds have gone down five percent. Now, in the next slide, I just want to tell you what that means. For example, we had four full-time nurse practitioners four years ago. At the top of the time, we have zero. There's a reason for that. If a full-time nurse practitioner is $80,000 a year and that's budgeted, retirement, uh, of course, is now 18%. And approximately uh, six years ago, retirement was 10% of it that we have to have uh, to add to the when we employ them. FICA is 6.2% about the same. Medicare, 1.45%. Health insurance, 30%, and what that means is basically, if I have an $80,000 a year nurse practitioner, I've got to have $125,000 in my budget to employ that nurse practitioner because we have almost a 57% fringe rate right now. 57% for fringe benefits. When I came up about, and I just, I will tell you, Retirement has gone from 10% five years ago to 18% now. Health, health insurance has gone from 13% five years ago to 31% now. That's what we have to have in our budget. And quite honestly, I don't have that flexibility. I don't have that amount of money, and therefore we have no nurse practitioners. The one we had doing family planning last year, uh, I was, we were interviewing to replace, we found out the state was going to cut our family planning budget. And indeed, uh, last year we had a 10% state cut. This year, this year we had an 8% sequestration cut back in the fall. 7% of our budget, our budget ultimately is federal. And all of this means that I could not replace that nurse practitioner in family planning and how, what a critical issue that is for our population. Just letting you know, of course, some of the budget issues that we deal with uh, in our area. And <clears throat> if you look, 2008, we had more than 224 times <coughs> down now to 
194 full time staff. We had a nurse practitioner, of course, I've told you already, which, uh, we, we have none full time at this point. We had more than 60 RNs. We're down now to 47 RNs down there in the bottom line, if you look right here. And uh, we, we have a, a huge turnover, 42% turnover rate, uh, limited and staff support, support staff, many reduced to part time. Um, 2000 state health rankings from two, uh, to now 2012, in spite of this, and we're a large part of this, uh, but the, we've improved in almost all of the parameters of chronic problems that we were addressing for priority. We've gone from 35th first out of uh, 50 states to 25th as far as adults who smoke, 37th to 25th in, in adults who do, do not exercise regularly, 39th to 27th in adults who are obese, these 41. 33rd adults with diabetes, 40th in infant mortality, and, and up to 44. And we are therefore prioritizing that because that is the one area that we actually put up in rather than down. And 47 to 38 in prevalence of infectious diseases like TB, hepatitis, and AIDS. Uh, the part of it, of course, with a high unemployment rate in the district, lack of high paying jobs, aging population. I've told you about sequestration, which is decreased with funding for mandated programs. We have an ability to compete with job offers from the private sector. If we have, we have a young nurse that comes in and trains with her, gets up to speed. They stay with us about a couple of years. They can immediately then go out in the private sector and get 30 to 40 percent more. We therefore have a huge turnover. We don't have a lot of continuity of service from that point. It's a major problem. Average age of the dip, uh, Department of Public Health district employees, 46.1. We'll have a wave of retirees uh, in the next 15 years, and we have an unstable staff following retirees due to the fact that we cannot offer competitive salary. Top eight health issues in Georgia remain about the same. Obesity, uh, asthma, tobacco, immunization, primary care access, infant mortality, HIV, and workforce development, and Sustainability, uh, basically, we, we, are, we would like to look at increased grant and aid assistance. Let me just break down a little bit of this for you. We get grant and aid from the state, we get grant and aid from counties. Uh, grant and aid from counties, we have a participating and non participating. What does that mean? That means that by law, you have to give us a certain amount. That's participating. Then you give us above and beyond that, which we couldn't operate or without, and that's called non participating. Uh, participating and non-participating uh, uh, grants have not been changed in approximately 20 years, just to let you know at the county level. We got a huge cut in the Lee County and Lyons County by the formula about three years ago. If it had been implemented, they get, they've held us harmless the legislature for the last three years. If it had been implemented right now, we would have another 100,000 <coughs> cut in Lyons County today. It's going year to year at the present time. It's not been addressed before the legislature starts. I think shortly, it hopefully will be addressed again. Hopefully, we will not have that cut. There's no guarantee. Uh, competitive salary, as I've said, we have the inability of experience, uh, to attract experience and younger staff and to keep them. And, and we have the inability to, to uh, really provide them opportunity for, for promotion because we can't give them commensurate salary raises. <coughs> And we need increased billing opportunities. That's more legislative and or departmental. But basically, we're, we're allowed to, to charge the very few things that we do. One of those few is immunization. And some is services that are provided, for example, by a physician and nurse practitioners. I said we have no nurse practitioners now. I'm the only physician. Uh, we have an issue. I'm just going to start. I'm actually doing this today for the first time. Because the state uh, canceled a stroke and heart attack prevention program two years ago because of funding issues, uh, starting with last Monday and today, we're opening up a hypertensive clinic at the health department. Uh, I'm going to staff at my one nurse practitioner who's deputy director. She's not, she doesn't do nurse practitioner work primarily. She's staffing and I'm staffing. What we're running into is we have clients in other programs that have serious hypertension. We take their blood pressure, they come in for another reason, we take their blood pressure, it's incredibly elevated. We know it's elevated. We know they need treatment of health. We tell them they need to go find a doctor. Go to the uh, they cannot. They walk out the door. They're going to end up in the emergency room with a massive stroke. Huge burden on the taxpayer. They cannot receive <coughs> treatment. And we have no way of treating them of a 
because we don't have any nurse practitioners now and or I'm on a position. But as of today, this afternoon, I'm spending about three hours in a hypertensive clinic that we just started in Miles County. I'm going to render medical care for the first time in about three years, primary medical care to clients who can't get it in any other way. And it's only, this is part of the challenge that we're running into in this situation. Of course, most of this, as you're well aware, is budgetary. And again, I say uh, on the local level in grant and aid in the counties, and I'm actually giving this talk not only to you, but the, the commissions in other areas, in other counties, of course, in the 10 that I, that I serve. Uh, the same call to let you know that the basically grant aid in counties has not significantly changed for, for public health in over 20 years. And, we, and the last slide, uh, outcome public health districts offer diverse group of services to the community with the continued decrease in funding streams for grant and aid services are being trimmed, discontinued, leaving the most vulnerable population without access to health care and basic services. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for Dr. Grove? I have two questions, Mr. Baker. Dr. Grove, um, I was looking on your presentation a few slides back. Uh, it's in our notebook as well that the mortality rate moved from 40th in the nation to 44th in the nation. What would you say contributed to the increase in that rate? We have a baby loss program right now. We have high risk mothers, and we have the highest. Uh, basically, it's, it's young mothers who are delivering uh, very premature babies, uh, and that is where the infant health is coming from. You deliver a preterm six month out of nine month baby, it's going to be a neonatal intensive care unit, and of course, these babies uh, do have a high mortality rate. And it really boils down to that. We have baby love program right now. We have funded by the state, 35 and a grant from Georgia. We just found out about a grant that we got from Georgia Healthcare Foundation for these highest of the highest risk mothers to go to their home. We have to go into their home. We, we try to show them, take care of themselves when they're pregnant and take care of themselves and the baby after they have the baby and or get them into family planning and all other support services we can. But that is the primary problem uh, and uh, Mr. Page and if, if we could get this through education, the message out uh, about this, which is very difficult to do. Uh, we, we could make a dent in that. It is a priority of the state of Georgia. It is a priority of the Department of Public Health. It is a priority of the commission, and it's a priority of the governor, and it will be and is being addressed. Are we um, in Lowndes County, how do we match up with the rest of the state? I know you're dealing with a whole district here, but is there a way to kind of see in Lowndes County is increasing being the largest increasing. county with the largest population pretty obviously we're at we're the top top heat in terms of numbers and in terms of, of issue of the issue the other question i had was um, when you were talking about increase in grant and aid assistance how much uh or i should say a percentage of your budget comes from federal funding and total, state funding, all of it directly or indirectly total 70 percent and again, they took 8% away from us back in September. So 70% of your funding comes from either federal or state? 30% is, is state, 80, state and or local, 80, 70% is federal, direct or indirect. It either flows directly to our programs or it's funneled to the state and then they, they send it to us. 70% of our monies are federal monies directly or indirectly. Dr. Brewer, would you? Uh, explain to the commission the proposed reduction, tiered reduction uh, for um, public health that was proposed a couple of years ago that they've stayed. You've mentioned it a little earlier, but would you just address that with the commission? It is what to what, Mr. Ranks? I'm not the sure. state level. You said the state was going to to reduce funding according to a tiered. If the new formula, right? The new formula was instituted about uh, four years ago. It was a new formula that basically, ultimately, uh, was based on poverty rate, poverty share, population. The first time they actually had a formula like this, 
What it ultimately did and what it would lead to and would have led to here in Lowndes County was a reduction in our budget of almost 20%. Uh, they were kind of phasing in on the seven years, the seven year phase in. We're in the fourth year. The legislature's held, held the lead county in Lowndes County, which by and large took the largest hit, huge hit. They've held harmless, meaning they did not take that money again. It's just year by year. They'll have to address it again this year. The new formula basically shifted shifted monies north to the northern uh, part of the state above Macon. Anything above Macon, of course, in my opinion, is Atlanta. Therefore, the money was shifted <laughs> north to the Valley Point. Huge, huge amount of shift. And that was not the only area where it was shifted. Uh, again, it would have been, it would have been at this point this year about a hundred thousand dollar cut if the legislature does not hold us harmless again. Our commissioner wanted to get the uh, legislature to approach this as a line item. Uh, she may have difficulty in doing that. It was her <coughs> thought that she may try for this to see what would happen. Uh, again, it was a formula that, had, that, was, uh, that was actually instituted as I came on about three, four, and four years ago. Uh, it's been implemented over seven years and it made a huge dent all they offer part of the budget, but of course, being the largest county, the lead county, the most population, uh, it would have, would have affected and would affect Lyons County more huge more than the other counties. Uh, it got a tremendous cut, as I said, and fortunately, up to now, it's not been Mr. Chairman, yeah. I have a question. Um, right now, uh, there was a lot of uh, talk about the H1N1 and respiratory issues in Lyons County. In fact, I think they had sort of a death or two the other week. Uh, what, what are we doing, I guess, uh, locally, uh, proactively, to try to, you know, reduce that respiratory. outbreak? Respiratory? Respiratory and the, and the so-called uh, the flu virus and everything else that's taking place. A a asthma. It, asthma is the main one. Of course, smoking is the other one. Okay. The flu, the flu uh, immunizations. Uh, our major uh, respiratory, of course, has to do with asthma, and of course, which ultimately has been seen in a lot of patients that go from childhood to adult. One of the things that I've learned, and I didn't know, I've practiced medicine for 37 years, if you're not uh, a woman, a pregnant woman with, ch uh, with children, uh, and you don't fall into a very special niche, and in spite of the fact that the, the uh, state government has had a huge hole as far as Medicaid expenditure, you really can't get Medicaid uh, if you are between 18 and 65 and just because you're in poverty. You can't, if it's male or female. So, so addressing any medical problem requires funds, and I think that, that's pretty obvious to anybody, and if you've seen our, 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 our medical budget, even in health folks, it's gone up hugely. We specifically address respiratory problems through the asthma program in schools and pediatric pediatric pulmonologists and or we do we do a lot of telemedicine right now. I can get off on a whole other issue. What we did we threw the T V and the endocrinologist down in Tallahassee, pediatric neurologist in Atlanta, the orthopedist and the cardiologist are here I'm getting off offline. You ask a question, I need extended here. <clears throat> they ask you a specific question. Those are primarily the areas as far as smoking, immunization for flu, immunocontrol vaccine of course for, 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 for that and for uh, we don't do direct care other than children on respiratory illnesses, and we don't do a lot of direct care other than children. Family planning, as I've stated, as far as any illnesses go, and that's one of the reasons we're working on high cancer clinics this afternoon. Uh, we don't render primary care. At one point, when I came on board, we had a primary care clinic here at Lyons County. Primary care clinic uh, was $100,000 total the first year I was here. I closed the primary care clinic the next year. I had no, I had no choice. Uh, and we are beginning to part of that this afternoon uh, at our nursing <coughs> school level. I had nurse practitioners then with staffing. I had no nurse practitioners. Uh, so again, I'm just going around your answer to a certain extent. That's the primary ways that we address our part. I appreciate it. And one last question. Um, uh, in regards to your chronic and communicable diseases program, does that include contraceptive services? Family planning includes contraceptive services. So it's the family planning. Big time. 
<coughs> and our famous planning nurse, and that nurse practitioner that we have part time, Deborah Adams, she was the lead nurse. She retired back in April. Uh, she was a nurse practitioner before she became a district nurse. She was a district nurse. She is now filling in to a certain extent the gap and putting in necrolon, which is a, a under the skin insertion that has to be done by a nurse practitioner or doctor. Uh, and she is the only one, therefore, qualified, certified to do that. She's doing a little bit of this to fill the gap in as best we can, which is a three year contraceptive uh, uh, device. It's by far the most effective, uh, and, and as, as opposed to other feminine funding methods that are effective but not as effective, there are certain things like IUDs and, and this implantation that only a nurse practitioner or physician can do. And we, we basically have no full time, we have her as part time for the issues that I've already stated. This is how we address feminine funding. Appreciate that, Dr. Thank, thank you very much for your time and your presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm.